It's one of the largest meat producers in the world. And tonight, an exclusive Contact 7 investigation is asking why the state of Colorado allowed a Greeley meatpacking plant to violate regulations and pollute Colorado water for five years. Chief investigative reporter Tony Kovaleski breaking this story tonight, uncovering concerns coming from neighbors and other Colorado businesses. Imagine hearing that sound outside your window for sometimes 12 or 13 hours a day. It was loud. It was obnoxious. Imagine wondering why it was going off, never knowing the real purpose of the warning. We always wondered if we were safe out here. Renee and Mike Giha live in the shadow of the JBS meat packing plant in northern Colorado, one of the country's largest slaughterhouses. From your front door to the treatment plant, how far? Uh, I'd say around 200 yards. 200 yards from water treatment ponds, a facility that processes waste from two slaughterhouses and then sends water affluent into this creek that feeds into the South Platte River. When you realized the sound was coming from there? When we realized it was that close, we thought, oh my gosh, this is not good. Records obtained by Denver 7 show there's reason for Renee and Mike to be concerned. For 60 straight months, five years, this water treatment plant failed to meet federal regulations when it discharged water containing potentially harmful chemicals that eventually made its way into Colorado's waterways. Everybody in Colorado should care about the quality of that water. He's a trained and experienced environmental consultant. He helps companies comply with pollution regulations to protect potential retaliation against his clients. He's asked us to disguise his identity. If that water resource is damaged, the consequences are enormous. You've done it for more than four decades. Yes. Ever seen anything like this? I have not. I've worked for on a lot, hundreds of projects with hundreds of clients, and I've never seen this before. Give me your take on what's going on here. A large influential corporation is able to break the rules without a state agency holding them accountable. This lawsuit filed by national environmental watchdog groups has demanded accountability. It's asking the courts to force JBS to comply with state and federal regulations and asking the courts to issue significant fines for each and every violation. We could potentially be talking millions of dollars in penalties. Tara Heinzen works as the lead attorney for Food and Water Watch, an organization with a long history of holding major corporations responsible for violating environmental standards. I think allowing five years of violations to go unchecked is really egregious. Unchecked because while JBS failed to meet water testing standards for 60 consecutive months, while this holding pond sent potentially harmful chemicals that fed into the South Platte River for five years, the state of Colorado elected not to issue a single fine. I think it's fair to say that the state should have taken much stronger action several years ago. If they're not going to find them, then I shouldn't be fined either. He's a Colorado dairy farmer. This is the milk parlor. A relatively small business. There's 48 cows on this rotor. Producing 25,000 gallons of milk a day. Potentially, I could be looking at a couple hundred thousand dollars in fines. He's asked us to conceal his identity because he also fears retaliation by state inspectors. He questions why JBS has not been held financially accountable. I broke the law for 10 minutes. I was fined. And if they're breaking the law for, for five years and not fined, I feel like there's that's a double standard. In fact, records reviewed by Denver 7 show during the five years when JBS didn't receive a single fine, the state's Department of Public Health fined 56 different businesses more than $7 million for violating water standards. That's not fair. Who deserves the blame here? Pat Fallsgraf serves as the director of the state's water quality division. Is it JBS or is it your division? I don't see it as my division's failure. He runs the agency Taxpayers Fund to make sure companies like JBS 
follow the rules. Um, the violations, again, were occurred by JBS, so they're ultimately responsible for violating uh, the laws and regulations of, of the state of Colorado. We also pressed the director to explain why small dairy farms are paying six-figure fines and JBS paid nothing. Is there reason to take a look at this and say, why the difference? Sure, absolutely. Yeah, no, there, there absolutely is, and we've already been engaged in doing that. Um, in terms of how this was allowed to go on for five years. We do not see that as acceptable. So the bottom line here is the state acknowledges this could have been handled better. It could have been handled differently. I don't know if I'd say better. Looking back, you could say we should have made different decisions. Could have been handled differently. Well, because of pending litigation, JBS declined our request for an on-camera interview. The corporation did send us a statement that included, JBS USA has invested substantial capital in an innovative technology to improve environmental performance. The statement also included, it took time to get right, longer than would we would have liked. The treatment pond is now in compliance with water standards, but equipment changes have impacted the company's ability to meet air quality standards, this is something we need to keep watching. A lot of questions. The state's certainly trying to figure out what happened. Well, it is certainly oh, an eye-opener. No wow. Kidding. Tony, thank you. Thank you, Tony. Fascinating.